This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. Well, Blank's trailer is looking absolutely smashing, and I'm pleased to welcome uh, the principal cast and the music director, which is the fantastic Karan Kaparia. What's up, bro? Good Thank to see you. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you. And Karan Veer, how are you? For the very first time, yeah? Very first time. Pleasure is all. And, an, and an old brother and friend of mine, Raghav Sachar. What a song. Wanting Nahi Dunga is, man. Fantastic. Uh, You're in fine from. Fine <laughs> Thank you, brother. So I believe you guys, which is yourself and Behzad, yeah. have lived with this, this script for a long, long time. Yeah. And why wasn't anyone wait, willing to make it? Or were you just not ready enough? So, Talk me through that. So I signed it in 2016. and when bazaar uh, came to me with it it was that one liner that stood out to me which is there's this suicide bomber he gets into an accident he loses his memory and then chaos ensues so that one liner is what jumped out you know to me but he always told me when he offered it to me also that the story around it is not going to be what it is right now i have a lot of changes to make a lot of things that i want to do my way because i think the original script wasn't his so he took that idea he got the ip and him and pranav who is the co-writer of the film they both started de- developing this script uh, after i signed it so that process took about a year to sort of develop this whole new script and this whole new story around this sort of unconventional one line and yeah that's what's basically that's what basically took us um, uh, you know that's what took up so much of our time was developing the script you know and making it sort of um, ready in the way that we wanted to present it and your producer tony you know i can say this with, with great love and affection it can be quite nuts <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i get these i get these weird 1:30 am phone calls from yeah, tony yeah, yeah, but that's it kidhar hai ek voice over karna hai रात के डेढ़ बजे तेरे को वॉइस ओवर करना इंस्पिरेशन स्ट्राइक्स ही डजेंट डेल ऑन इट ही डजेंट लेट इट्स टू ही जस्ट यू नो एक्ट्स ऑन इट विच इज ऑल्सो गुड थिंग यू नो टू बी इम्पल्सिव अबाउट दीज थिंग्स आई थिंक विच इज वाई ही इज ऑल्सो इन द पोजिशन दैट ही इज टूडे एंड ब्रो रैप एज एन आर्ट फॉर्म I mean, it's something that you've been doing since you were in school, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying all of a sudden it's blown up, mm-hmm. and there are two varieties to it. One is the fact that you know guys like Badshah and Raftar have made it so commercial. Right. You know, it has all the the tropes of the big cars and the hot girls and this and that, and all of a sudden there's this this underground movement which is mm-hmm. divine and nazi and all these guys. Right. So, uh, wanting na indunga seems a bit of both. <laughs> 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 At least in terms of great, it's more more the yeah. the. the gully boy kind of scene so right. so talk me through rap and whose idea was it to to do a you know hip hop kind of record on this one man so essentially the concept was that we had to make a thriller track and just you know give do justice to the to to what sunny sir is going to be doing on screen and and how exactly it is the film is about, is about a bomb blast and how these things are intertwined and i needed to make something which is high energy really high adrenaline and it needed to stand out within itself it did not have to have a, a visual to it for it so the whole idea was to make it very new age keep it very very young and with today's sounds as you can see there is no tabla dholak or anything else which is indian so to say happening in the arrangement it's all western uh, and it has very electronic kind of a vibe to it uh, we had a grungeish like a rock uh, voice we needed so we got amit to do that He's done a fab job uh, and of course now now with rap being what rap is and how it's blown out of uh, proportion literally uh, for after so many years now rap has become uh, uh, something which jo se jaise interlude hota tha na you have to have a musical interlude in between a mukhna and antra now it's that that part has been filled by rap, rap. so every song more or less uh, any genre kind of demands a rap yeah. piece these days whether it requires it or not require it it is a different ma- matter altogether that is something that unfortunately uh, because it has become because you know you don't need need to be pitch perfect you are talking you can rap if you know how to talk you can rap it's as simple as that you need to have a bit of a sense of rhythm of course but that becomes easier for so many other people to now connect to and it's a large connect that's the reason we needed a rap section nb has done that yeah but but raghav the thing is it was equally true of when when eminem and jay z were blowing up in the west right. is equally true of indian rap is that the writing has to be absolutely correct absolutely. and when you have a subject like blank mm. and a subject a theme like you know warning nahi dunga mm. the writing becomes really really important so did nb write his own portion or do you get somebody else to write it no so the song is written by kumar 
and Kumar had done the lyrics. वो बैठे बैठे ही हो गया था literally. The song composition also. Kumar actually nails the Punjabi stuff really. really he's actually he's cool. a very talented guy. Yeah. So he nails uh, he comes comes to come you know he cuts the chase and come to the point uh, kind of a guy. So and वो तुकबंदी में तो he is number one. So so the song happened very quickly. It was actually the composition also happened for half a day job for both of us. The arrangement, of course, took time because I wanted to design it in such a way. Uh, and NB, of course, read, uh, wrote his own rap and did his own things and sent it to me. And I, we had some directions that you know, do it this way, that way. But we did not actually record together. He did his own thing and sent it, and he wrote it. So, Karanveer, how early did you come into this project, bro? Were you were you with their dream from the initial stage, or were you one of the last ones to come on, as far as Blank is concerned? I was the latter, actually. I was uh, one of the last people to come on board. Yeah, in fact, that was how Tony sort. It's a total Tony moment how he came yeah, on board. Tell him. So basically, so you're, 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 some so so you're yeah. not the only 1:30 a.m. friend. Yeah. You know? Okay. So I can say that because me and Tony uh, and Bezad, that time Bezad was uh, the associate uh, for this film that we did together. Uh, Tony directed it called Azhar. So um, I played uh, Manoj Prabhakar in that. So that's how I got to know of Tony. I knew him before. I had met him. I've always been wanting to work with him. Yeah, but he's... how he called you? Know what he said? Yeah. So eventually, then you know, Tony being Tony, like he rightly <laughs> said, he's like, "Kya kar raha hai?" Azhar ke time pe bhi the kya kar raha hai? Acha aja. Uh, blank ke time pe, and I'm like, I was literally like shooting that day, and I'm like, like, uh, Karanir, what's up, bro? I said, "I'm all good, man. What's up? What what's happening with Captain Nawab and this and that? Something else he was doing." He said, काम की बात सुन क्या कर रहा है बोलो क्या कर रहा है मतलब हम शूटिंग है नहीं आ जा एंड इज लाइक नेक्स्ट डे इज लाइक बॉस देखो आने का ही है कैसे भी एंड और पैसा से शूटिंग दिस एंड इट्स अमेजिंग एंड तूने तो 24 किया हुआ ना तो तेरे लिए तो एक्शन इजी है बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू तुमको प्रेप टाइम तो दो यार मतलब वन मंथ भी नहीं बाकी है एंड लाइक यू डोंट डन द सेम थिंग गन ब्लेजिंग एंड ऑल दैट सो आई डोंट नो इफ बैक इन द डे यू वर साइंड ऑन टू यूनिवर्सल एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई वाज यू वर सो यू नो बिफोर बिफोर ब्लू हैपेंड एंड यू नो बॉस हैपेंड एंड ऑल दीस फिल्म्स टोली यूज्ड टू मेक द cassettes and cds on yeah, universal <laughs> tony tony those has 30 done second, those weirdest 30 weirdest second promos so he threw the he threw the videos first oh, and he obviously told actually, he told me that i know you <laughs> so, so, universal did you know did you know tony <laughs> sir is in jo jeeta wahi sekandar kya baat kar rahe hai what what surprise he's in the movie there's i right. for like 5 seconds but he's in the movie he's in jo jeeta wahi sekandar which part is it i don't remember but beza <laughs> told me recently so he's done everything and anything possible so bro he used to sit in the small studio in bandra yeah. and you know once the video was made you don't need a voice over the video they used to do the ed pack shots yeah. of the promo <laughs> <laughs> Wow, man. And that's where I used to come in. But you know, amazing guy. Amazing you know, guy. Gone on from strength to strength. That that's really amazing. So uh, th- this is just such an amazing connection. I believe your mom was was styling Mr. Diol back yeah. in the day. Yeah. So she yeah. did his costume and hair for like well over a decade. Yeah. And, and these were days when you know fashion was, and styling was were not like the the coolest thing. Yeah, to do. yeah. And uh, I think you know even uh, my mom had this uh, really bad illness that she went through. And I think e- even when she was ill. she uh, worked on this film called Chamku which he wasn't in but it was a Vijayata films production with Bobby Deol and Priyanka Chopra so she got that work done in her illness through her assistants that's how dedicated she was to him and i used to be on his sets as a kid when he was at the peak of his powers i'm talking like late 90s early 2000s so you know being on his sets then and then like 20 years later like being in front of him in character saying lines sharing the frame with him it was like you know coming full circle almost surreal in a way i still say that that first day with mr deol uh, doing my uh, talky scene with him was the most uh, nervous that i've ever been it's also the most memorable day that i've had but, but i think it's it's really magnanimous of him if you go on to youtube and you just do a search for blank or you do a search for bank on on google mm. whenever there's a bite when people ask him about blank he says bahut achhi picture hai karan kapadia kaam dekhna bahut achhi it's a nice film but watch karan kapadia watch it's almost as though i mean he doesn't even talk about himself yeah, yeah. and i think that's that's wonderful and also i think because of the of the respect that he had for your mom yeah i'm sure you know back in I'm the day sure, yeah. you know the kind of like we said there was nothing known as style right. you just Definitely. went picked up a shirt and wore it yeah. and you know she was she was doing all that stuff and it was so much, much more before. difficult then because now there are so many brands from overseas and everything that have come in and you can source clothes from them and this and that at, th- at that time it wasn't like that we literally had a garage in our compound and she had her carigars and they used to sit and they used to make these amazing costumes because she didn't only do stuff for Sunny so she was styling Shri Devi she's done Chachi Char so be she's done everything so you know just seeing like the preparation that went into creating the costumes for these characters was fascinating in itself 
I can't even imagine what it must feel like. But did she know? Did she have a sense of of the fact that you wanted to be an actor? No, she never. In fact, after she passed, is when I told my family, which is it's one of the few regrets that I have in life, is that I never got to tell her that this is what I wanted to do. This was what my dream was, and you know, even now, like it didn't really sink in. But I just when I was shooting one day with Sunny Sir and Vasai. that's when it really occurred to me you know it would have been so incredible for her to see her son uh, you know in the same film as uh, sunny sir you know sharing the screen with him doing action sequences i think she would have been super proud well, i'm sure you got a sense that she was around i mean in a lot of in a yeah, lot of ways and, yeah you know i i've been lucky i always say that i've been lucky enough to have two mothers in my lifetime you know so my aunt has been nothing short of a mother to me so you know the fact that i can at least make her proud and see her reaction to the things that i'm doing i think it's more than just a consolation and growing up in that house uh, you know with tina's sense of humor yeah yeah, yeah. life it's would infectious. have been nothing short of excitement no exciting. it's infectious <laughs> and also having someone like her keeps you really grounded uh, because i did something a few days ago and she came and she's like i saw what you did i didn't like it So she's that, Tina, yeah. <laughs> so she's that upfront and like even when she saw the trailer, she said that how many minutes? I was like ab- about two and a half minutes. She's like, oh, didn't seem like that. So that's twinkle quote for your trailer is awesome. Yeah. So you know <laughs> people like that, like they, uh, you know, you want them around you and the fact that you know she also happens to be my family. It's an incredible thing because I know she only has my best interest at heart. Yeah, you know? yeah. She's so yeah, yeah she is. She is my biggest supporter, also my biggest critic. So, so Karanveer, I mean, um, here's a film where you where you're playing a cop, yeah. um, and this is an anti-terrorism task force. Is that it? Absolutely. Is that it? And Absolutely. in that aspect, you've done this stuff before. Yeah. Uh, 24 yeah. being the most notable one, yeah. um, and like you said, you were just shafted into this. Yeah. But you, did you get your bearings quick enough, or did it take you some time um, on that set? Honestly. Uh, I never get my bearings uh, quick enough uh, the first day on shoot because everything is so much of chaos, and that's the beauty of cinema. You know, everything falls into place. I mean, if it's supposed to, and it's a blessing, and you thank your stars for it. But I did do some prep work. I met this um, senior inspector called Pradeep Sharma. He's. I just wanted to do some interrogation scenes, and my director gave me that leverage that he wants to keep it very real. Mm-hmm. So he used to be like a boss performance. Nahi chahiye apne ko. because uh, when we did azhar it was a different it was a caricaturish kind of a role it was you got to play somebody else this one is not that it has to be as real as possible and so since you're talking real how does the interrogation work like for example you know that in the west you can't interrogate a guy beyond a point because it could be used lawyer. against you in, in court lawyer up, yeah. lawyer up yeah so yahan pe bhi wohi hota hai jab hame pata chala to that time it was uh, i said you know my first question is like you know is there something like a third degree like boss ye tum filmi wale kuch bhi bana lete ho aisa koi third degree nahi hota hamari ek hi degree hoti hai aur wo kaisa hota hai wo to teko pata hi lag jayega teko dekhna hai to i said ke sure more than merry and uh, he was very very calm he said ke we don't really inter- we come in only when it's dire circumstances aisa sir ke interrogation ke basic rule kya hote hain what is it so you say ke dekho you have to see to it that within 48 hours uska ek hai na hospital se ta- uh, you know pura aayega bio data that you he has to be completely fine he or she whoever they are has to be completely fine that you've not uh, tortured them otherwise it will go against you and your system that's the law but i said what about a terrorist sir and he said ke terrorist ke liye koi rule nahi hota okay, they don't deserve any so that's the thing yeah very telling point so uh, when you say doing arrangement of your track considering you play what 16 instruments at last call 36 16 oh, <laughs> <laughs> i still remember you from school yeah i know he is actually done my first interview ever radio interview yeah. was done with rishi <laughs> in delhi i don't know i was must have been you no know, 14 bro ha i think so something like that damn yeah. now we're giving our ages away so <laughs> <laughs> luckily <laughs> i suck at math i'm just i'm an actor so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so well, you know so how many of the instruments do you play yourself or do you still get in you know somebody do a guitar riff for you Always. or something yeah yeah i like to create work for other musicians as well because you know now what's happened over the years is that technology has become so um so savvy now with everything that you hardly ever use live instrumentation in fact when i had come into the industry it was just changing at that time you know I still used to do a lot of live. I still do a lot of live on my own songs because I end up playing them myself. So that's a that's a big plus. But otherwise, to hire uh, out people with the kind of budgets that are going down on film music, 
it becomes very difficult. So then everybody starts using samples and stuff like that. I try and create as much as uh, as much work as I can. Like I play the acoustic guitar, but I would like a nylon guitar and I'd like a picked guitar parts and stuff like that. And I would get the people to come and do that. Tabla dholog I don't play, but this that gets used very often in a lot of films, uh, songs. So you get them. String sections unfortunately now don't happen in India. I I mean personally I don't do them in India. We, now it's become because the world is coming and getting smaller with technology. You do uh, sessions in Berlin or you know in Europe somewhere where you have a proper string section. So musicians essentially. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you direct them over Skype. Yeah. When you're doing That's a string right. session. Yeah. 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 You direct them over Skype. You do all the scoring and stuff. So it gets international. It also gives you that that uh, grandness that you're looking at. And of course, within India, unfortunately, the the it's the musicians themselves are not as well trained as you would like them to be. When you're giving them a score, they need to perform on the score with that kind of perfection and the notation. So that that doesn't happen here. Yeah, if you have to do one or two violins or three violins, stuff like that, or brass section uh, things, then then of course you do that. But even for AR, uh, he when he wants to do brass, for example, he sends him sends me the files. So I stack everything independently, multiple layers of saxophones, trumpets, so on and so forth. So it comes across like a proper section instead of sending that now to Berlin or uh, elsewhere to get them tracked. Yeah, and also you know it, because of your knowledge and because you've studied music abroad right. and things like that, uh, I would imagine you should be doing a lot more of BGM. Does background music not interest you that much? It does actually a lot, but background music ha comes with its own share of uh, time constraints. So it has it goes into months literally, and see what happens is that if you ask me uh, where a uh, true uh, un uninterfered performance you can give is in ads. Of course, agencies have their own. You know how it works. But after ads, backgrounds background is a beautiful space to get into. Unfortunately, it doesn't have money. Mm. So when you come down to everything, boils down to how much you at the end of the day, how much do you, how much time you're investing, and how much money you're getting. For songs, songs are far quicker. You are done with three minutes. You're out. And uh, how much ever effort you you're putting in, you're, that effort is only for those three minutes. Here you're talking about a two-hour reel. In the two hours reel, there are different sections that you have to keep creating. So that becomes a bit of a problem. And the return on what you're creating and the amount of time that you're spending is far lesser. Having said that, I have done a few backgrounds in the past. And I would love to do more. It's just that it somehow has to sit in to the time frame. That's fantastic. Any student of music listening to this in India would really that would be a master class. And on that note, uh, the background background boys on our film, uh, Kezad and Rushin, they are incredible. I yeah. think once you watch the film, uh, I saw it last night. Uh, you know the finished product, and it like sits with you, man. And like you feel it in your. It's like a visceral experience, and it's like I just told Bezad after I saw the film to experience it to its full capability. You have to watch it in the cinema because the background is next level. I think it elevates the film to a different stratosphere it's and i know it sound like i'm hyping it up but it's really that good so i think kezad and rushin i think if people don't know about them big big shout out to them this is amazing you know because you when you see guys who are more established like ragav sachar or yeah. salim and suleiman you know who have the the wherewithal to do that background music, yeah. but then they weigh the cost benefit analysis yeah. and say it's better for us to do tracks. Right. It opens up a whole section yeah. for young kids to yeah. come in there and just bang out a great soundtrack. Yeah. Actually, right now yeah. the music industry is completely booming with the young talent only. I mean, it's not. Um, I'm probably doing one one or two films here and there, but the younger guys are. They are everything is operated by a laptop, man, and it's just so mobile. I mean, spending all the unnecessary amount of money that we have on the studios with no returns and stuff like that. This has become very compact. Life is really become compact for music producers now they can really be traveling on the go and create some yeah. really mad stuff so uh, since Benzad is not here yeah. Yeah. what's and you know he's a first time director so very little is known about him other than you guys who hung with him and things like that what's his what's his directorial style because in a thriller yeah. you've got to have a perfect understanding of what you're doing you know thriller is like comedy yeah. it's not like run of the mill yeah. you know you've got to get the timing right so what's his style man I think when you're talking about timing, I think especially in like a fast-paced action film, uh, one thing which is sort of um, eminent is the fact that the director needs to have clarity in chaos. And that's very difficult, you know, when you have the pressure of like sort of, uh, you know, portraying what you've asked and asked the producers to do 
you know so i think hats off to him he never lost clarity because i used to always like deviate him i used to tell him that you know i'm your senior <laughs> this yeah. time around bezad <laughs> so uh he was very kind enough i mean he was he used to incorporate any good suggestion but at the same time if he has clarity he will stick by it and i think that's what makes a good, good film yeah i i was thinking that mr deol is is going to be the strong silent type of this one yeah. till he let out his his familiar scream uh, in the trailer <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. but predominantly what is his character is he more like understated uh, or is he yeah. before uh, before i uh, get to mr S- uh, sunny deol uh, i just want to say bezad is the what makes his directorial style so special is that he has the edit in his mind before he shoots it mm-hmm. so he'll never take extra shots or full coverage and waste time he knows exactly how he is going to cut his film in his mind which is and he's been around for so long he's paid his dues he's been an assistant he's been an associate so he's technically and you guys were assisting together on one boss on that's boss, how we yeah. met mm-hmm. in 2010 so yeah he's so it's all thanks to tony yes. this is happening so he's <laughs> there was a guy who used to work on this show who's worked in boss shiv pandit yeah i know sir <laughs> yeah. so his sister so also gayatri was one of the ads as well what do you say yeah, so that's so i always say this that you know vinay who's holding the camera here they can also dream big yeah, <laughs> yeah anything is anything is possible <laughs> because because shiv was working on the show i i've got to say this that amongst all the people who worked on the show he's one of the smartest and i always used to encourage him saying you know if you don't want to do radio then what are you doing yeah. you got in there and gave auditions and he, and he did that no, i'm and sorry what was your question about sanjeev no, sir sorry since you, we digressed yeah exactly so is he the strong silent one or is he the like the the gather screen no, i think he's definitely one? the opposite of what his image is he is very shy reserved to himself i mean he will speak to you no, no, in this particular film oh in this particular in this film role, in this role in this yeah. role um he is basically someone who is uh, extremely dedicated and passionate about his work he is duty first no matter what he will raise his voice when needed he will raise his fist when needed i think that's the kind of person he is and uh, he follows basically justice and not protocol and uh, he's a no nonsense sort of cop and you know he's sort of this hardened been there seen that kind of uh, character and with loads of experience he's been through all of this before you sort of feel when you sort of look at him on screen so yeah that's what his character is like and obviously when my character is introduced there's this sort of chaos like i said that ensues and how he goes about uh, tracking me in the film yeah actually he reminded me of uh, to add to this uh, if anybody's seen uh, paul newman's performance in road to perdition of course yeah. Yeah, so yeah. i think uh, that's what bezad was trying to get at and like you know and sort of mm-hmm. make it more uh, real that rather than in fact his portions uh, portions are very jason bourne esque yeah. thank you, know, you. So in fact a compliment. in yeah. fact yeah, you know the first person to say that which is a huge deal obviously we're not uh, we can't we're not uh, comparable like that but i the aspect of the lost memory and the sort of trained soldier in a way that aspect is yeah similar so and i remember meeting ishita when she's doing a film with kapil sharma yeah and Firangi i was or something yeah like and i and i had a 10 minute conversation with her and i said man you know you should be doing more work yeah So it's great that she's in this yeah, uh, in this extremely movie. talented actor and uh, you know props to her as well cuz uh, she did action in the film and she has not been trained never done action and she was amazing she's like everyone's but done But did she replace somebody are you in a position to tell me who she replaced I can't tell you who she replaced but even I wasn't the first uh, person blank was offered to by uh, yeah so I would uh, imagine that assisting on boss together no, you were like soul no, no, soul mates in fact, as the case with most of in, the actors In fact it was a really I was uh, auditioning a lot it was a tough time for me I was finding opportunities hard to come by so when people say you know why you chose this because it's unconventional i'm like no i chose it because it was the only thing that was <laughs> in my path and the only thing that was offered to me so it was as much to do with luck as it was anything you know wow so much for nepotism and corruption yeah, and things I mean, like that people will never know <laughs> <laughs> honestly i'll tell you something um, you know if people if this whole nepotism has gone to another next level kind of thing with the audience but i'll tell you what i the audience listening to it as well is like if nepotism is there is a good thing people like us need work you know if even the people who are there, there's like a unit of 300 people abhi sab log nepotism ke thodi hai mm-hmm. you know so you have to understand that and i honestly speaking about uh, karan i think i have gelled with no other male actor yeah, as quickly yeah we had quickly, a good bond yeah. you know as i could because you know he's so he's there for a reason he's very very talented hats off to him so my, my explanation is alwai ka beta halwai banega baba <laughs> and tomorrow if my kid turns around and says i want to be in radio i'll do my best to help no, out and, dude and, and, you know, i'm not going to tell my child that go to hell and yeah. i tell them that you know nobody from my family is credited <laughs> in the film nobody was at the trailer launch and they're like oh but they're tweeting about it i was like chal if you open a sweet shop tomorrow if your brother sure. is a ca you'll still want him to promote your shop right so people go to it yeah. so i think i just happen to be lucky i guess that the 
family I come from is well known. But I've still had my struggles and my journey, you know. And as is obvious, if you don't do a great job, Tina and uh, your aunt will be irrelevant. the first ones to kick your butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's for sure. She's <laughs> my, my aunt's my biggest fan, but Maybe my sister for sure. She'll just write a column on it. <laughs> so, so what's the song that uh, that uh, Mr. Kumar is doing with you? What is Akshay sir doing with you? Which song is it? It's on the is it the Ali song? Yeah, or? it's this song called Ali yeah. Ali. Uh, I think it's written by Arko and sung by B. Prak. And uh, yeah, it's a really good. Arko is such a funny character. I, I, I met him actually at the rapper party. He's too funny, dude. Yeah. But uh, it's a really groovy song. It's the kind of song that sort of you know that there's this particular tune. It's out on the jukebox on YouTube. Yeah, and I've it, heard two versions of it. One is the yeah. I think the Hansraj Hans yeah, version. Yeah, so the B Prak version yeah. is the one that uh, me and Akshay sir performed to. But it's the sort of uh, tune that sort of sticks in your head, and you won't realize it, and you're humming it, you know, before you know it. It's a really catchy track. I think even the video. I think we've pretty much uh, gone all out with it and tried to make it as. Uh, Aesthetically pleasing, and obviously we don't want the f- we don't want it to sort of make the film lose its vibe. So it's in that space also. So it's a very uh, intense but uh, aesthetically pleasing video, I would say. Is it like an end credit song, or is it going to be somewhere in the in yeah? The film? As of now, what I know is it's going to be an end credit song. It's right now. It's just like for promotional purposes, you know, to sort of uh, help the film get out there. And it was his way of saying good luck to me, so I'm extremely grateful for that. But he's also a great dancer, so is it more swag and body language? So than I'll it, tell you the craziest moves? thing is, I had uh, three, four days of rehearsal. The first day being six hours and like drenched in sweat. I must have lost like you know three kgs just Who's in. Who's the choreographer? Uh, Ranju. Ranju, uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to pronounce Vargas. Uh, he's phenomenal. So I had like three, four days of uh, you know training and rehearsal, and he didn't rehearse at all. He just came and two minutes before the shot, he's like, "Acha, what do I do?" They show it to him, and he does it. So that's what he's like, and he just has this uh, you know natural charisma to him when he's performing. He sort of owns the camera and the lens. It's surreal to watch him live do his thing. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's not sharing the most interesting thing because he was so into like getting everything right. I literally came from another. Shoot to just wish him good luck, and when they were so basically, there's one sequence where Akshay sir is like going full blown, and then improv is happening, and he's literally in the middle of it. This is not planned at all, and he's like standing on one guy and like yeah, screaming. He'll climb yeah. the guy in front of him. <laughs> the guy is also like, like yeah. But yeah, that's just how he is. I think uh, that's he'll also just jump on anybody. That's like, also yeah. what 25 years plus experience yeah. does for you. You know, exactly. I like the fact that you never sit idle, huh? Even if you're not working on a film project or a or a ad film project, your your YouTube page is always active. <laughs> you're doing something or the other. You put out some delightful Game of Thrones stuff, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it, and I love creating. Uh, yeah, I've not seen the episodes. Huh? Yeah. No. Don't spoil it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to tell you, you the episode. Make, you should make a movie now, bro. You know, because you you've got all aspects covered. You know, Hopefully. bits of everything. Hopefully. You know, I, I speak to guys like you. Speak to guys like Karan. I see that you know eventually, yeah. you guys are all. You know, filmmakers in your head. Hopefully, yeah, that's the plan one day. I guess all intertwined, man. Yeah, Everything yeah, is intertwined. No, yeah. yeah, creatives are like that only. Just keep expanding. <laughs> and you, and you really think of these the, like the Game of Thrones stuff, the video and the whole, the vibe of it and things yeah. like that. You spend time on that, man. Yes, yeah. of course. We designed Ashley. I got Ashley on board, and I said, uh, um, you know, why don't you do something? That's why we had the choreographers that we did. Um, the dancers did a fabulous job, and I wanted it to. I mean, my showcase. A lot of times, people forget that my main forte is that I play so many instruments, mm-hmm. and they are all uh, rare instruments. So the first three instruments that are there on it are didgeridoo, which is an Australian Aboriginal instrument. You start with it. With yeah. that, mm-hmm. then there is a bass clarinet, which a lot of people have never seen only, and then there is a tenor recorder. And tenor recorder has been like out of the uh, system for God knows how long. and then it of course goes to the modern instruments and the saxophones and the flutes and stuff like that but the whole idea was that why not you know uh, get some other sound which is not in the system right now beautiful okay last few questions before we get uh, raghav to play some for us we're doing a campaign called run with radio 1 where we're trying to promote fitness through running as you need as you can see i'm the one who needs that <laughs> most desperately so are you a cardio kind of person karan we do you run on the treadmill do you run outdoors What's your running routine like? My running routine is just for clarity, honestly. You know, whenever I need some time, uh, some downtime, I just run. You know, I don't do do it for cardio or anything. So it just sort of stimulates me to get my thoughts together. Like some, you do long distances, yeah? Yeah, basically. F- early on, it was uh, my bathroom and uh, like a hot shower. It changed. You know, I just wanted more clarity, and I was lost at one point in time. So anybody who's like that, I think it's helped me. It could help. And you hit the roads? Time. You hit the roads? Roads, sand, not the treadmill. Wow, cool. Nice. 
What about you, bro? Um, running? Hmm. Yeah, football mostly. Most of my running happens there. I, I'm a big fan of the sport, but I, I actually have this on my bucket list for a while. I do want to run a 5k eventually. Uh, when I get around to doing so, I don't know, but it's definitely something that I want to do soon. And whenever you do run, is it like an indoor quick sprint, or are you so more like him, which is long distance so, so stuff? The, so, the, so the only running I really do is if I'm playing a sport or something. When I'm at the gym, I try to do mostly like functional stuff. I don't really like do cardio per se, like on a sort of machine, like you know whether it's a cross train or a treadmill. I don't do that. But I, the only running I do is only if it's like sports related. Rajab, do you do any running at all? Hmm? I do um, once in a while, but again, that running is more or less on the treadmill. It's not uh, outdoor usually. Uh, I also love sport more, so I um, end up doing more swimming. Uh, if not that, I used to play a lot of squash earlier, uh, which I had tennis elbow, so I don't anymore. But golfing is something that keeps me walking a lot. And when you when you're on the treadmill, do you do the interval stuff, or do you just do one like constant speed? Um, usually, I do uh, when I'm doing treadmill. I usually do like uh, running on ten or eleven, uh, and then walking again on six. So about thirty, forty seconds, one minute, two minutes. And then cool down, then again run. So not uh, not too much on the incline and stuff. My knees go up for a toss. Yeah, I tell you, I actually made a plan one day that you know I'll start running on the beach, and I bought a new pair of kicks and everything. <laughs> I was super excited. I went. Fifteen minutes into it, I stepped in some feces. Okay. So I would just urge everybody out there who take their dogs for walks on beaches and roads that please clean after your dogs and uh, pets because it makes it really uh, difficult to really enjoy the city for the rest of us whether you're walking on the road or running on the beach nobody wants to be stepping in waste especially one that comes out of something living so <laughs> very well put which actually brings me to our next question which is called we're doing a drive to save the environment uh, which is called heal the world uh, for example in my place we've just said no to plastic no plastic yeah. comes in at all yeah. um, we had the guy who was cleaning up Versova beach talking about how he spent some time every week with his friends just cleaning right. afros yes. so uh, your bit to save the planet what are you and the family doing uh, first of all i i think the waste you know i mean plastic is something that uh, i banned way before it got banned so that's one of the initiatives you can do but uh, because you know i so we both are like jew boys mm -hmm. you know and there's like this one whole sewage which is just a dump yard which is creating so many mosquitoes and so many ailments and bad air I think it's it's high time we like get our act together as uh, you know responsible citizens for sure. Yeah, we need to recycle our waste. Recycle our waste for sure, and uh, I'm I've actually uh, just uh, sort of uh, you know tried to help out wherever I can. Like there is uh, this company I've just joined an NGO, you know, where they sort of make uh, solar power lampposts. So that's going to sort of reserve and conserve energy. Cool, cool. So your face is. Uh, a faces incident counts as healed environment. Yeah. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, plastic, of course, being one of them, but uh, pollution. Pollution is something that, uh, you know, that's really, really, I mean, if you see our air quality, yeah. uh, it really, like, really sucks. And Delhi, especially during winter and during Diwali and stuff. So I urge people not to, I mean, whenever they are doing Holi, Diwali, these kind of festivals, festivals actually turn out to be the biggest pollutants yeah. for us, whether it's Ganpati, Holi, uh, also, uh, Holi yeah. everything. So, you know, that is something that uh, we guys can all change, and especially through social media, uh, these kind of things can... The more the educated people are there, the people are responding like that. But you know, you just to change the uh, environment suddenly with so much uh, population is really next to impossible. But just I mean, as as people are getting into it, they are changing. But of course, for starters, just the basics are: please get your car PUCs done. To and start stop with. littering. I hate that. Ki bhar gao jayenge, they'll hmm. never throw anything. Ya aate, window niche karke, people will start throwing things out. So please stop littering. So all three of you, who's your BFF? It can be from the film business or outside, Karanvi. Uh, my father. Why? Guy. Why? You have to also tell me why. Uh, because he's my go-to uh, person. He's been a more of a friend from the start, you know. he's He gave me the best advice, actually. I, as an act, when I was taking up acting, I, the biggest task I ever had is that I could never, when I was schooling, when I was in college, I could never get those definitions in my head because I can't, like, be a parrot. I had an issue with me. I don't know. It was some problem. I said, shall I get myself checked? What is it? And then later on when I thought that I'm going to become an actor and I was like, the first thing that you're supposed to do is learn a line. How are you going to do that? You can't remember. You can make your own line up. That's a different thing. But if you have to stick to a certain dialogue, how are you going to do that? And he was really helpful. He said, you know what? Just keep a photographic memory and just remember the best elements that you need to remember. The rest is all okay. So he's my go-to guy. That he's is so cool. Guy. 
BFF and who? Why? Uh, I mean, I love my family and I tell them everything. But if my best friend would probably probably be this buddy of mine called Oday. I think he's been my friend since way, like way back since we were in school together. And he like my friends sort of keep me grounded. Him included, you know. They for them like they were looking forward to coming on set and watch me lip sync so they could laugh at me. <laughs> so that's the kind of people they are. They, it helps keep keep you grounded. They have no interest in your work, and you know sometimes that's a good thing. You know, especially with the people that are around you the most. They're like definitely not yes people. They're quite the opposite. So definitely, yeah, Oday. He's one of my oldest friends and also one of the realest people that I know. Raghav. um family of course uh, everybody uh, mom dad sisters everyone i'm very very close to so i discuss but with our, besides family i would say my best friend has been aditya the guy who directed uri mm. aditya dhar are bolna <laughs> audition audition super film super, super film super guy he's really struggled uh, he in fact when he shifted here he he was my my manager he wrote the lyrics for kabul express and all of those he he had done and he is my go to guy for any any like last, we've been friends since we were six if he's making uri to tell me ha kar raha hai kuch wo dhamal hi karega we bhi to vicky kaushal ke sath hi karega he is really, really i'm so happy for him with oh, his success killed it yeah what a film man yeah and totally. yeah he's my he's my bestie so last question to everybody a travel destination that you went to and said this is it my favorite is london yeah for Why? some what what is london do to you just i just it's just like I never have a bad experience. That's just, that's that's mm. a good thing. It's a bit of everything, a bit of architecture, a bit of technology, a bit of everything. A party place, I love it. And people are so incredibly polite, mm. which is so But wonderful. That's everywhere. It's lovely, yeah. Nice, it's yeah. lovely. Uh, probably Manali, uh, because my aunt loves going there a lot. And you know, uh, th- you realize once you go there, there's so much beauty within our own country that sometimes goes unexplored. Mm. And I'm not talking about ma- uh, commercial Manali. I'm saying when you really go for treks and go to these sort of far off places that are sort of you know not accessible to some people who wouldn't take that effort to go there. you really see how beautiful it is you know uh, up north and uh, i think it's truly stunning and i try to go back as much as i can so manali definitely raga well um, luckily with our profession uh, you know travel comes with concerts travel quite a bit um, and i have <laughs> all right continue it's on tempo <laughs> um so i ha- i i had just shot a video last year in uh, scotland and i thought this is like this is it like you can't get better than this as far as scenery is concerned because it just i love nature but re- last year i had gone to new zealand i mean bro i can't tell you what that that place like you take a right turn a left turn you go straight you go backwards it is jannat to the next level i have never seen something a place so beautiful where your water starts where it turns into uh, clouds where it goes into a sky where are the ha- peak mountains it's just is just seamless Picture so postcard. yeah in yeah. fact i ended up shooting something in new zealand and that has been the best scenic view that i have seen of anything here yet listen you guys best of luck for blank canvas to watch it thank you karanveer thank you so much thank you, you, so you, you raghav cheers